Hey, Patrick, going back to that pit pass rush, you guys were consistently atop the country, I think averaging like four sacks a game over two years. What about that group works so well together, uh, especially now that the Vikings got two of you guys? Uh, it was just, we just bought into the culture. Really, it was the coaching that uh, we had, the scheme we had. We just bought into it, and we just try to learn and get better every day. That's all it was for real, just pushing each other to be better. And collectively, did that kind of help you guys decide to go back to school? Because, I mean, you could have come out in the 2020 draft even. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely did, because I feel like I had so much more I could get better and work on. Uh, so I came back and tried to improve on that. Sam? Patrick, what kind of influence did your coach, Charlie Partridge, have in your in your development over the, the four years you were there? Uh, I'll say the biggest influence he had over me was that you can't just be an athlete. You got to be a student of the game, too. And you have to uh, you have to really study the game and be a professional uh, when you're approaching it. So now, like, when I'm at this level, being a professional, I've been doing it at Pitt. So it's not going to be like a culture shock to me. It's just something that he, he's been installing on us. So now I feel like I'm well prepared. Patrick, how did you find your identity as a pass rusher? What's what's your signature move? What What's your go-to? Uh, so I just, I actually I actually got a couple moves. I got an inside swim move. I set up the field and hit an inside swim move. That's something that works really good for me. I got a really strong bull rush and I got a, a cross top and a ghost move. Uh, I just I just watch a lot of film. Like Coach Parcher just had me watch a lot of film and I'll go out there and just try those different moves. And then I would, I would literally probably try like a different move every week of the season. And then I'll just find whichever moves work best for me. And those are the moves I would just go with. Three. Uh, you lined up across uh, Christian Dersaw directly when you played against uh, Virginia Tech. What was it like going up against him? What were the challenges uh, for you in playing against him? Oh, yeah, he was a good player. Uh, yeah, we were definitely battling, going back and forth at it. Uh, it was it was a good matchup. I mean, when you when you out there with a uh, with a good player too, you have to uh, compete on another level. And and when it's like when it's like that, iron sharpens iron. So you feel like you got better from the game. You learn some stuff, and then you could just it just makes you better when you're going against a great player like that. Okay. Hey Patrick, uh, congrats and welcome. Just uh, wanted to follow up a little bit on how you watched film. Was it a, a a few particular pass rushers and kind of how much, how much time did you invest in that on a, say like a weekly basis? Uh, yeah, uh, shoot. I watch a, I watch a lot of film. Uh, I watch, so I watch, I watch, of course I watch Aaron Donald cause he was a pit, even though he plays D tackle, but he lines over the edge sometimes. I watch Khalil Mack. I watch TJ Watt. Uh, I watch Yannick, uh, who else I watched? I, I watched Daniel Hunter when uh, he started making noise. He really caught my attention on how he was doing it. Uh, and then, uh, shoot, I watched, I watched so many people. I watched Preston Smith, uh, uh, shoot, TJ, uh, JJ Watt. I said, yeah, I watched, I watched so many people. I probably, I probably watched about, I probably watch two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, an hour at the practice, probably about five hours a day. So I'm watching film. So anywhere from like probably like 20, 25 hours a week, but just film. I was just studying. Chris? Yeah. Hey, uh, Patrick, back to uh, battling Christian Derisaw in college what's he like on the field does he talk at all during the games or is he just a super quiet guy what's his personality like and have you gotten to chat with him or know him a little bit since you've been here in minnesota the last few days uh yeah i mean i i he, he's cool he's cool dude he talks a lot talks a little i talk i talk my trash back i mean it, it was cool for it it wasn't too much like too much talking back then, uh, 2019. We were just going head to head. We were just battling. Uh, but no, he, he cool dude. I talked to him a couple of times, but we haven't really had a chance to sit down tonight. We've just been locked in on learning the plays and, and handling what we got handled. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, the the list of pass rushing moves that you have. You mentioned the cross chop, which is something uh, that Unique Ngakwe has, Daniel Hunter has. Is that something? where you see a pass rush move that you think you can pull off on the film when you're watching, you know, these guys 20, 25 hours a week, and then you go 
to your, um, you know, defensive line coach to work out how that works? Or is it the other way around? Would they come up with a move that, that they think will work for you? And then you go find pass rushers that can do that. Uh, so you would, so the first thing you, I would do was I would look at the tackles I'm playing that week. I would look at how they set, how they punch with their hands, with their high punches and low punches. So like a, a move like a cross shot works good for people who are low punchers. So if I see someone with a low punch of hand, then I'm a, uh, then I'm gonna I'm look at the cross shot. I'm gonna start studying people how they do the cross shot. Like for example, T.J. Watt, he does the cross shot about two steps, where certain people do it off of three steps. Like it's just different stuff like that that I do throughout the week. Sam, Patrick, how did your years in Japan shape you as a as a player and as a person? Uh, yeah, my years in Japan, they definitely shaped me a lot because I moved around so much. I think I moved probably like nine times before I was the age of like 14. So just just moving around that much, it just made me like, I feel like it made me very cultured. It made me very uh, well-rounded, just having to adjust to like so many different situations. And it just made me appreciate like where I'm at at the moment. Because when, like, when you would move back, when I moved back then, like, for example, once I moved from Japan all the way to North Carolina, and that's like, you never really seeing those people again. And it's just like, you just want to appreciate the, the people you're around when you're around them. Sam? 